Hi all, let's check out another early game of Tigger and Petrosian in the 1950 USSR Chess Championship. So upcoming was the World Championship match between Bronstein and Mikhail Botvinnik. But uh, in the 1950 USSR Championship, there are a lot of rising stars. So Tigger and Petrosian here against Bondarevsky. Knight f3. Bondarevsky, by the way, was awarded the GM title in the same year as this game and the grandmaster of correspondence chess title in 1961 he was also an international arbiter in 1954 he finished first with andre lilienthal in the ussr championship of 1940 so 10 years before this game he came first in this and qualified for the 1950 candidates but due to illness was unable to play he played in nine ussr championships between 1937 and 63 Later, he turned to writing, teaching and training and coincidentally acted as Boris Spassky's second in his world title matches against Tigran Petrosian. So here Petrosian is playing against basically one of Spassky's seconds in a future match he was going to play against Spassky. His wife, Valentina, Valentina Kozlaskia, was one of the world's leading women players he was an economist and he passed away in 1979 so Bondarevsky an interesting interesting character and a future second against the Petrosian so let's see knight f3 e6 g3 we have the Dutch defense bishop g2 knight f6 castles bishop e7 d4 it looks fairly standard stuff even by mon modern theory but uh, the Dutch Stonewall isn't so popular nowadays, but nevertheless, Magnus Carlsen, the current world champion, has used it on a number of times. So it's sometimes played even by the world chess champion. Uh, C6, so going to be setting up this stone wall with D5, Queen C2. Now, instead of an immediate D5, we have a more curious move, but it looks fairly standard as well, Queen E8. Often the queen does want to come to h5. One possible reason for a delay might be that black is aware that if d5 immediately committing the pawns like this, white does, with the knight on b1, have the option of b3 and then maybe bishop a3 to swap off this light square bishop, sorry, this dark square bishop, and leave these weak dark squares. So queen e8 delaying d5 is interesting. We have the knight committing to d2, now d5. Now a very nice manoeuvre which has been emulated by many, many players later, knight e5. The idea of this temporary visit to e5 is to come to d3. So both knights can then look and hold down black against e5. And we see this knight bd7, the knight comes back to d3. This is become a very very standard maneuver nowadays against black's pawn chain like this to try and keep a grip on central squares knight e4 knight f3 the other one comes to f3 knight d6 and yes that pawn is now attacked it's protected and perhaps a little bit over ambitious now b5 perhaps b6 was more cautious b5 allows an interesting approach from white although black would seem to want white to release the tension in the center this next move from Trojan shows that actually you know white is going to get a space advantage which could be quite dangerous even though he's resolved the tension and d5 is now more solid for example this position here has other weaknesses now for white to try and tap into the spearheaded pawn on c5 gives white a space advantage on the queen side and white now plays on the queen side with a4 we have b takes a4 rook takes a4 so clearly black's under pressure now on the queen side bishop f6 which does mean two pieces are now facilitating e5 but after bishop b2 e5 isn't played it's not such a big deal for black to play e5 in this particular position uh, for example if a6 was played but if e5 d takes 
here knight fd4 and there isn't too much damage that black can do if he takes here et white's got a very pleasant position in fact here so e5 although possible it wasn't played here a6 now white actually secures a knight on e5 here clearly stopping black from liberating with e5 now if, if he did want it's gone and yes c5 looks a little bit vulnerable but uh, at the moment it doesn't need to be protected uh, anymore so just f4 holding down e5 a bit more rook b8 rook f a1 as though there might be an exchange sack later or pressure later on a6 emerging rook b5 hitting c5 that's protected h5 so is black going to generate some counterplay on the king side we have to move bishop c3 which further strengthens white's grip on a5 so this is now a fixed target it is the backward pawn for white to potentially torture if only this bishop could later attack on that diagonal so that's a long-term plan to try and exploit the backward pawn on a6 black on the other hand now plays h4 e3 is played we have knight b8 this poor bishop is stuck behind its own pawns knight e1 now with knight e1 yes the way is cleared on this diagonal for bishop f1 later but also knight f3 could be useful we have the move rook b7 getting out of the way of bishop f1 and a very very interesting decision which shows great prophylaxis skills even from the young Tigram children who's only about 19 years old at this point he tries to stop black's kingside counterplay if he can do that and then win a6 black's position should be collapsing after that because then there'll be things like b5 and a pass pawn here so what he needs to do is stop black's counterplay on the king side and we have a great example of early prophylaxis Petrosian later shaped many generations in terms of his prophylaxis play in particular stopping the opponent's attacks before they even conceived of them so he would rarely lose he became kind of nearly invincible very rarely losing now in this game yes there it does seem to be some attempt at an attack but fundamentally black is without pieces here to support the attack the bishop's kind of trapped in its own pawn chain the knight is a miserable piece the rook here though if g5 meant then maybe rook h7 the rook might have a career prospect in the not too distant future but what does white play in this position and it's a great combination in terms of a prophylaxis combination you could describe it as so white to play here to try and stop black's king side counterplay what would you play in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video now okay g takes h4 so after bishop takes h4 now we have knight f3 and it looks as though hold on a sec isn't black going to play things like g5 and switch switch the rook over the key point now is made in respect to g5 what does white play if i give you five seconds here okay h4 just locking down g5 of course it weakens g4 but how is black going to exploit the g4 weakness this lockdown this clamp on g5 means you know if white's going to get extra time he'll gang up on a6 soon and maybe also that g file that semi-open g file is another one which is dangerous both these files are quite dangerous potentially to black we have queen h5 hitting the pawn now that's protected with bishop e1 so for the moment the bishop is helping on the queen side but this rook's holding b4 anyway and helping on the king side bishop d7 releasing some defensive resource from a6 but is this bishop holding up now other things or is it going to come back in the game via h5 that's often the maneuver in the dutch defense to try and get the bishop out zigzagging to h5 queen f2 king f7 bishop f1 
this pawn seems to be in big big trouble now black here doesn't try defending it any longer with say rook a7 there are other dangers as well in this position if white is given time black actually plays rook h8 letting go of the a6 pawn it's taken knight takes rook takes what is black's idea is he just getting ground down here well this infiltration to the seventh does not look too pleasant a pair of rooks come off and now knight d4 the queen and bishop are holding h4 g5 still stopped and b5 is now on the cards on the queen side queen h8 now queen g3 so this g file is being used potentially and black slips up a bit more now with queen b8 queen b8 now means that h5 is very very good the queen's going to get to g6 if the queen gets to g6 e6 is on the even more pressure we have rook a7 yeah black's position is on its last legs rook c1 it was possible here just to play queen g6 actually for example even this is now possible the white's position is so strong that this this is winning here here and the pawn's queening next the position is just winning here now but uh, rook c1 is another logical move it means that the past pawn is ready after b5 to be pushed even more queen g8 check king f8 so active operations are on both sides of the board b5 and also of course this pawn is now held by the rook this is all over really queen f7 now white just takes on c6 winning another pawn after bishop c8 the game was actually adjourned and the next day Bondarevsky resigned here it's clear that white can just play for example rook b1 to go to b8 and if rook a8 then c7 is killing with the idea of rook b8 for example the impression this game gives of an early Tingram Trojan is a hint that he kind of enjoyed snuffing out black's kingside counterplay and playing on the queen side later breaking down the queen side doors a very very impressive game positionally showing great positional strength and some of these maneuvers have been emulated by the rest of us in future generations basically the knights coming to ie5 etc but the prophylaxis play is very impressive of course from even the young tigram chosen here playing against one of his seconds his future seconds against Boris Spassky. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.